The Girl at the Window uh, is written by Lisa McGee, directed by Des Kennedy and performed by Anthony Boyle and Julie Lamberton. And Des and Anthony join me. Good evening. Good evening. What did you make of that? Have you heard that Yeats reading That's before? That's my first time hearing it. It's absolutely beautiful, Mary Louise. Get away. You've never heard that before. It's, it's, no. it's incredible. Um, there's actually something very mesmeric, isn't there, about his voice and the rhythms of it? Yeah, yeah, it was so so soothing and and just uh, like a window into another time. Yeah. I'm going to listen to the rest of the recordings when we yeah. get off from you. Do that, do that. And um, f- f- look, before we, we get any further into the chat, uh, I want to let listeners hear some audio. Now, these dramas are only, what, five, six minutes long? Five, five minutes each. Five yeah. minutes each. So uh, I had chosen quite a long bit and then I thought, I'm giving most of it away. So if you don't <laughs> mind, I've chosen 56 seconds. So bear with me. Oh, when... Jesus, 56 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to give everything away, Anthony? No, I just, I just don't want to listen to my own voice for 56 uh, seconds. So I'll leave the room. Don't come, come back. <laughs> come back. It'll, 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 um, it'll, be a different, uh, it'll be a different audio to yeah. the one that we heard there of WBH. Let's, let's listen to it. Hi there, it's me. I'm sorry to call it this hour. I mean, I know it's late. I just... God, I don't know how to say this. I think there's someone watching me, Chris. I've never seen her before. Perhaps if there'd been somewhere else to go or something else to do, I wouldn't even have noticed her, but there wasn't. And I did. There's this girl across the street. Dad's house looks directly into hers, number 13. She was sitting at the window today, just staring right at me. She's watching me. I know she is. It's been three days now, Grace, and she's still there. She's even wearing the same dress, this yellow dress. I don't think she's moved from that spot. And she knows I can see her. Okay, so that was Anthony Boyle, his dulcet tones uh, <laughs> from The Girl at the Window. And uh, Anthony, and obviously we don't want to give too much away, but you played Jimmy. So what exactly has he found himself in during lockdown? Um, so he has lost one of his parents. And obviously during lockdown, he can't have a funeral or a wake. So he is stuck in the house. He's drinking himself himself. <laughs> silly every mm. night and he's you know going through sort of this exploration of grief and and just really it's just really hit him like a ton of bricks and there's no one around him to to comfort him yeah so um he sort of begins to lose his mind a bit and fixates on possibly a girl in the in the other house and uh, mm-hmm. whether or not she is real or a figment of his imagination. Talk to me, Anthony, about the process of, of recording this because it was all, I saw the photographs and everybody's in masks and, you know, socially yeah. distancing. And uh, what was that like as, as an experience for an actor? It was, um, it was really bizarre because, you know, usually when you get the set, there's, there's, there's hair and makeup touching you, mm. there's, there's costume touching you. You know, you're getting fiddled with every 30 seconds. So just to be sort of left there on your own was was quite bizarre. And no one was allowed to be in the same room as me. And, you know, it was actually kind of strange. Towards the end of the day, I just wanted someone to hug me because I just missed, you know, human contact. It was really, it was really quite bizarre. But there was, actually, there, was yeah. a, there was a funny time when we were, I was doing a scene and I was looking out the window and I was trying to do something really intense. And then a van shop pulled into the street. I just started beeping the horn like mad. I don't know if you have a van shop where you're from, but we were in Arima and a van shop came in and it just completely broke me and Des out of the, out yeah. of the whole mode. A van shop would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Des, in a way though, uh, as a as a director, uh, the, the strangeness of the environment, the fact, as Anthony says, you can't be touchy-feely there. And because it's about lockdown and isolation, in a way, it was almost method acting, was it, for, for Anthony that you were having to put him into? Well, yeah, completely. We're all so tactile in theatre. We're um, no, uh, you're we not to... really, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony and I had to rehearse this over a messaging app, 
and Lisa and I were kind of discussing the script over a messaging app. It's all these sort of weird ways and weird ways of using technology to yeah. make work these days, which is really, really strange. And even seeing Ant Anthony when I went to film, again, yeah. it was, you know, hadn't seen in a long time and you just want to you know, get close and hug and yeah. talk about the scene and everything and, and that was impossible. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have history in that? Do you have worked together before um, uh, with uh, with uh, the cursed child um, mm -hmm. and Des? Mm -hmm. We know you from from the Good Vibrations uh, as well. So was that did that make uh, that shorthand, Anthony, knowing Des and knowing his his way of working? Was that was that well, something yeah. that was very good? One hundred percent. He, um, I think we have such a shorthand with each other because you know we come from a similar area and like we have similar sort of interests and a similar sort of um artistic approach and um when we done the cursed child on the west end and on broadway he he helped me so much because of there was just a shorthand and um that we didn't need to be too sort of airy about the words it was just sort of des has a really great way of just sort of cutting into the the soul of me and saying just do it a bit like this you know what i mean <laughs> or asking me these questions that will that will lead me on to to find a different way of doing it so um, I love working with Des and I hope I work with him until the day I die. And you also know, well, let's not go to, well, let's just hope for more. Well, we'll not, okay. Well, well I hope it may be just a long Des time. Just Des until I die. Just Des until you die. Um, but yeah. also, you know, Lisa McGee as well, um, because you uh, you were in Dairy Girls. Mm -hmm. You were that yeah. heartthrob, weren't you? That uh, yeah. Aaron wanted to do, to go and watch his, his cool band. Yeah, um, Lisa's, you know, she's the best writer knocking about at the minute she's just incredible i mean i think what she's created in dairy girls is just it's phenomenal i don't think it's it's the best thing on tv at the minute um and you know to work with her and with des was just an absolute joy i just jumped at the chance and to get out of the house because you know lockdown's been a bit of a melt for everyone <laughs> yes, to get out of the house <laughs> and and uh, well i mean obviously you've, you've name checked des and you've name checked lisa mcgee uh, what about winona Ryder as well you're in something quite big with her coming up yeah, we we just it just aired in America on HBO. I think called the Plot Against America, with um it's a David Simon project, uh based on a Philip Roth novel wow. of the same name. Um, it's about a a fascist during the forties rising up in America. Um, so it's a bit current in, in what we're seeing today. I think it, it premieres in Sky Atlantic over here, July fourteenth or something. But yeah, we're known as an absolute legend. She uh loves the Pogues, just an absolute. <laughs> I just think a great woman, yeah. <laughs> Known as an absolute legend. And uh, Des, what about you? What other, I mean, this it's, look, it's incredibly awful news that's facing theatre at the moment. I know that we have to be aware of the horror of coronavirus and, and the disease and how m so many people have died. And then we look at uh, businesses going to the wall. We hear all the dark reports about the economy. Uh, Theatre, though, seems to be one that uh, is going to struggle very, very hard to get people back sitting seat by seat with one another, you know, staring at a stage. How are you feeling? What's the mood? It's really quite scary for theatre. I mean, obviously, we'll be one of the last things to reopen again. Um, it's hard enough when you go and see a play and somebody coughs and it distracts you from what's mm. happening on stage. But I think just for audiences to feel safe, for actors to feel safe, for people to work in theatres to feel safe, there's going to need to be a lot of work to happen and we don't know when a vaccine is going to come we don't know when people are going to be happy to go back into theatres again so I think it's for the time being it's just about theatres finding other ways to put work out there and, and it's amazing that the BBC have commissioned this with the lyric I had watched uh, they had something like this with Headlong Theatre Company in London and they did something with National Theatre Scotland and I'd really enjoyed watching those so it was just an honour mm. to be part of something like this um, with artists from Northern Ireland and, and it, it's really a lot of the people who have made this project are theatre artists who haven't done a screen before but so this is another opportunity for people to make work in a new way which is fantastic. What was that like for you Des because I mean you would be a theatre uh, director what was it like to be behind the the lens? Well you know it's so interesting because for Anthony the process was so strange but for me I had nothing to compare it to so I I just <laughs> found it really enjoyable. Um, <laughs> and it got fantastic... you out of the house as well did it? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Um, stop me staring out the window going mad. Um, I there were I had fantastic support and I, I really want to name check Jim Cray who is the director of photography yeah. from the BBC. Yeah. He was just a, a wealth of knowledge and taught me so much about yeah. how to make work for screen. So I'm really appreciative 
of him. Uh, he, he's a man that, uh, a bit of a legend with uh, Give My Head Peace as well. So he would yeah. have known all the inside info on that. But yes, I mean, that's somebody with a, a huge uh, decades of experience of, of, of making uh, uh dramas and everything you know so it's it's great that you had that support as well are you looking forward to seeing the other guys have you had any sense of what the other five dramas anthony have done have you been able to swap I, with any of them no, no i haven't seen any of them um i think des might have seen some of them but i'm i'm just looking forward to seeing them all and seeing what everyone's done yeah anthony take care and good luck with everything that uh, comes your way thank you for taking our call this evening des thank you a pleasure always chatting to you and uh, continued success uh, with uh, with your work splendid isolation lockdown drama is going to broadcast on bbc2 northern ireland 10 p.m this thursday the 25th of june it's also going to be on bbc4 and afterwards on the bbc iplayer